we are. A blizzard, a fire, and a cup of coffee. Cheers. So I've always wanted to do something like this, where I do something kind of just out of nowhere, you know, spontaneous. And today's blizzard has got me to thinking that what I should do is, in the middle of the blizzard, make a fire, sit down next to the fire, and enjoy a cup of coffee. So we're going to take a little bit of time here. Get this kind of cleared out as best we can. Throw some wood and I grab some uh, coals from the fire. So I'm not trying to uh, <laughs> make a fire in the middle of the snow. Okay, there's our hot coals. Here is, oh, wrong way. <laughs> there's the fire pit somewhere in there. So uh, yeah, let's kind of get this started here. Obviously we're not going to dig out the entire fire pit, so I think I'm just going to make a floor with some logs and then pour the coals on top of that and hopefully the coals will be hot enough to overcome the draining effect. Someone probably ask, like, why? What's the point? And I guess really, there's not much of a point. This is kind of, this is kind of ridiculous, <laughs> to say the least. I guess where the idea came from was from another YouTuber. Not this specific idea. It's not a copycat, but about kind of like figuring out some weird things to do and then kind of reflect upon why you do things. And so really what this comes down to is the fact that this place, this homestead is more than just, you know, making YouTube videos or anything. Uh, it's about like enjoying life and for our kids, giving them something that a lot of people don't get be close to nature basically enjoy life and experience it for more than what the suburb is and going to Costco and going to see the movies but what it really means is to have a full life and experience things that others have not I mean, how many people enjoy a cup of coffee in the middle of a blizzard by a fire? Well, we got our first flame. And it's out. I'm trying to protect the fire as best I can from the snow. Yeah. Trying to make a roof. You still have enough oxygen. I gotta say, this is a unique dilemma here. I'm trying to Mother Nature and the falling snow and getting it hot enough to actually burn the wood. We're getting there. There goes the wind. At least the wind can provide some good oxygen. See? 
fire. <laughs> So another reason I'm doing this is this, this week, my son, the oldest, we gotta take him to the hospital. And uh, he had a seizure. He's okay now, we're back to normal. Which, uh, <laughs> it's actually kind of surprising how fast the family goes back to normal and the kids go back to being kids. But, you know, that morning, you know, starting off our morning like that, on a Friday, where I was planning to go to work, and the, and the wife was planning to go to the gym, and suddenly and abruptly, our plans changed drastically. State police came, ambulance came, two, and then suddenly I'm in the back of an ambulance, taking my son to the hospital. Come to find out, he just outgrew his medication. The therapeutic range for his uh, anti-seizure medication was, well, not in therapeutic range anymore. And so they increased the dose. But with that event, just kind of solidifies the point of why we're here. Other than the fact that we are in an area that it takes substantially longer for first responders to get to our house, we're here to provide a different lifestyle for our children. You know, we're never going to be homesteaders to the point where we're self-sufficient. And I really actually don't know, know that many people on YouTube that are 100% self-sufficient. I mean, people still go to the store. Um, even the ones that are, like, extremely, like, you know, I saw one where they built their own house out of, you know, clay and mud from their own property. Even though they go to the store. Oh, yeah. Now you guys might be able to actually see flames here. But yeah, we're trying to, at least I am. I maybe, I think my wife's on board. <laughs> but I want to teach the boys, you know, how to build fires, you know, how to cut down a tree, how to change your tire. <laughs> uh, we as a society, especially, you know, I'm basing, I guess, all my, you know, personal experiences and. Um, opinions on the northeast here where I feel like you know we've become soft as a population where doing the hard thing is avoided and we always try to do the easy thing we try to make the easy dollar the fast dollar we don't you know putting in that hard work is almost frowned upon in our society now Not as warm as it was before because it just sat in the set in the snow. It was on the porch, but it has some extra in it. So here we are. A blizzard, a fire, and a cup of coffee. Cheers. It's so good. There's something about the, the crackling of a fire that just brings some peace to mind, you know. Whatever anxiety and stress that I feel when I sit next to a fire, and I smell that smell, and I hear the crackling of the wood, and the hissing of the water, it, uh, it brings some peace to me. It brings that level down. I have to say, I was actually a little bit worried that I was going to be able to get this actually going. <laughs> you know, yeah, I am using some of our firewood, which is nice and dry. Uh, well, this is nice. Something different. I'm trying to make content on a YouTube channel that's different than everybody else that provides some kind of value and some kind of entertainment is sometimes challenging. You know, there are so many YouTubers. ago I got injured and uh, I really don't know how it might have been 
you know, chopping firewood and splitting firewood and lifting logs are too big for me to lift. Could be on all the, uh, the increased amount of running. I just tried to increase the miles I was doing per week. Uh, but I got a hernia, um, you know, and I'm in a lot of pain recently, a lot. And I have surgery scheduled and they're gonna repair it and hopefully it works. Man, side note, it's always whenever you sit by a fire, the wind will always blow the smoke in your, in your face. It doesn't matter, they'll find it. This is my injury. It's kind of been a, how do you say, like a, a challenging thing to get my mind wrapped around is that for the next, you know, six weeks after surgery, which is not for an additional two weeks. So, you know, six plus two plus, you know, two weeks since my surgery. So you're talking about 10 weeks of, unfortunately, not doing the things that, you know, I'm used to doing. Um, the level of stuff I can get done on the farm, on the homestead is diminished. Uh, it's even challenging to heat our home with firewood. You know, the wife is doing a lot more, uh, bringing it in, uh, loading the firewood bins. Uh, preparing for next winter and try to get firewood, you know, prepped for, you know, the dry out over the season. And I can't run now. Uh, run, not, not even just run, it's really, it's, uh, you know, all exercise, unfortunately. And it will be like that for some time as a recovery. So it's nice to sit down and actually still be able to do something. And something unique about halfway done this cup of coffee already shame I'm enjoying myself I just wanted to do something I guess unique and different um, and possibly something that you know no one else has thought of <laughs> uh, and it's not just about making the fire it's not just about sitting you know like a weirdo in a blizzard drinking a cup of coffee but it's about like slow it's about like slowing down it's about taking the moment and finding yourself i guess i guess the uh people in yoga or people that meditate would say like you know recenter yourself you know to find to bring that energy back and you know well center yourself this covid environment is stressful in everyone and yeah, especially since the lack of community now, you know, the people are uh, not seeing uh, other human beings as much. Not, you know, unfortunately, there are some people that don't see their family or not seeing their moms and their dads and their sisters because they're so, um, you know, fearful. And, you know, I'm not going to talk about, you know, the right and wrong of COVID lockdown or this or that. You know, you have to do what's right for you and what you believe is correct and you know, what you need to do to provide for safety for your family. But, you know, we still get to see, or, uh, you know, or my, and my in-laws and we still see uh, the sisters and the kids. And we take that, I guess, risk. Uh, and we keep it into our immediate family, but our kids need to develop. And they're not going to develop locked in a house for a, now a year, uh, <laughs> almost. And the lockdown started in March. So now it's January, actually it's February, February 1st. So 11 months, we got young kids, we got, you know, almost a one and a half year old and a four year old. Unfortunately, kids don't develop not being exposed to other people. So we've done our best to keep them exposed and to, uh, you know, learning, uh, you know, opportunities, uh, especially with having one child that's uh, special needs, um, you know, Unfortunately, uh, every parent is struggling with distance learning right now, but distance learning does not really work for a child that's uh, uh, nonverbal at four years old. <laughs> speech, speech therapy is not as effective if it's not in person. My hot coffee is now getting, getting close to be a nice coffee. And we've been very fortunate. We have, a, we have a speech therapist that is near us that is willing to see in person you know, as medical professionals are allowed to do right now. The real point is, is the fact that we're not having the, those connections anymore. And so people are, are feeling depressed, feeling uh, anxious, uh, stress, and uh, you, have to do, you have to do what's right by you and take care of yourself, especially in these times. Definitely not trying to be alarmist or anything, but
make a fire. Get a cup of coffee and just enjoy the moment. Even if there's two foot of snow around you. Oh, there goes the fire. I have to say, this was an interesting experiment. You know, can I build a fire in the middle of a snowstorm? Covered in snow. Can I still make the video? Especially with all the smoke in my eye. <laughs> I guess the end. You know, the, the hope, I guess, in the future is that, you know, I can do this with my sons. You know, come out here, build a snowman, uh, build a fire <laughs> in the middle of a blizzard, and, uh, you know, sit here and enjoy some hot cocoa with the kids, warm up by the fire. There's not many children, especially, like, like I keep on saying, around here that get to enjoy this kind of life. And it's not knocking on anybody, you know. We're all dealt cards in life, and we have to play the ones that we have. You only get really two options. You either play the cards or you uh, you fold. You know, some lucky people get to, uh, to get de dealt new cards in life, but very rarely. That's the last of my, what was once hot coffee, now ice coffee. I guess that's how we'll end the video. A cup of coffee, fire, plenty of smoke, plenty of wind. There's not any like, you know, massively powerful message that I'm trying to relay, but slow down, enjoy life, enjoy being out in nature, do something unique. I guess get off the, uh, for lack of a better term, the, the mouse wheel sometimes and the, the grind. You gotta stay grounded, for lack of a better term. And I'm using all these terms now. I used to kind of like joke around with my wife because she was a yogi, but you, do, you really have to as you get older. You kind of realize that uh, things like this matter in life. So just get out there and do them. Have a good day. Stay safe. And we'll see you next time on All Heart Homestead.